Hi, my name is Chloe Pontine and I'm from Brooks High School. Today we're going to chat with Andrew from Ambulance Tasmania, so let's go have a chat. So Andrew, what's your role? I'm an intensive care paramedic and I'm also a clinical support officer with Ambulance Tasmania. What does a typical day look like for an intensive care paramedic? Generally, we sort of start and um, we check our trucks and check all the equipment's ready to go car accidents, heart attacks, things like that that you often see in the movies too. We do a lot of just um, basic domestic type work of people with um, low level injuries and who need some advice. A uh, huge amount of serious things in one day or you can go to some very you know, um, low level basic things in a day too. What's your favourite part of your job? I, uh, I really like the variability and also being um, the, that help and support to people out in the community. What are some of the opportunities of being a paramedic that people may not realise? So we've got a, a range of different roles within our organisation. So um, I'm an intensive care paramedic and that's my skill level, but I'm also a clinical support officer. So as part of that role, I have um, responsibilities in education and auditing and being um, a, a senior clinician or some guidance on cases for crews so they often call me out to um, just give them an extra set of hands or maybe bounce some ideas off and also I have a bit of an auditing role too where I might go out with a crew just to check that they're you know meeting the standards that we require. There's also the air ambulance which runs out of Launceston I've worked on that uh, before and so that's a whole different environment again. I'm also a wilderness paramedic, so um, it, most of our cases for search and rescue are undertaken by the helicopter, but obviously that can't fly all the time. We have other roles within the organisation as well that other people do. That some people um, go along the management and training line, um, other people go into operational sort of management lines. And we also have a few other special t specialities like um, driver training and uh, bariatric ambulance and uh, urban search and rescue, which is your uh, collapsed buildings and earthquake type scenarios. How did you first become interested in becoming a paramedic? Uh, for me it was a, a bit of a personal story. My mum was quite sick when I was um, sort of 11 or 12 and uh, she was in and out of hospital for a number of years and just at home she required some treatments and uh, and other stuff. It gave me some exposure to healthcare and I quite liked the idea of it. Um, I also used to give, you know, there was an injection that my mum needed that she was just too scared to give to herself. Uh, so I started to take on that and every now and then she'd need that every uh, injection every day. And that just sort of, you know, fed my interest and really got me um, thinking about ambulance. And then I like the outdoors, I like variability, um, very changing, um, you know, day to day practices and things. So as a whole role and uh, method of work, it really suited me and my personality and so that's why I chose to become a, a paramedic. If someone wants to become a paramedic, what pathways should they look at? So things have changed a little bit since I started my training and now we've gone towards a very university model of training. So what I would suggest was as you go through high school and college, you have a broad range of subjects that you need, but um, certainly some focus on the health sciences, the biology and a little bit of physical science and a good knowledge in that area will help you. And then it's university training now, so you would uh, enrol in the bachelor, bachelor of Paramedical Science and that's done out of UTAS or there's some universities on the mainland. Once you've completed your training, um, should you be lucky enough to apply and gain a job with us, there's then another 12 to 18 months of on the road training just so we can do a, a tick off of all your skills and theories that you've learned and give you some real world experience to apply to that degree that you've got and you'd be then qualified as a paramedic that can practice independently with Ambulance Tasmania. So beyond the other skills of the paramedic training, what are some other useful skills to have? I think you need to be a fairly flexible person and adaptable to really um, thrive and survive in this environment. Uh, we go to lots of different scenarios, lots of different patients and while there's some similarities, everything is different and you know, getting into somebody's house, some people have got really easy houses to get into, some people have got hard houses to get into, so there's a lot of changing environment. You have the textbook condition of what somebody may, might be like medically, but in the real world this is how they actually present to you. So you need to be sort of inquisitive, adaptable and flexible to really make all these sort of bits of knowledge and experience that you have in the, your head come together and work well to function for that patient. 
Thank you for today, Andrew. It has been great and hopefully all the information you've given us gives a good insight to students on what to expect in becoming a paramedic.